Hi everyone, my name is Maddie, or a cotton sock, and I am here to bring you this week's Inzoi news. As I was able to get my hands on the game back in November when I did a partnership with Crafton, I feel like I have a really interesting perspective on what I can share further about the game and things that I saw. The footage that you're seeing on screen right now is from my playtest back in November, so don't think that this is like new updated footage. This is just some leftover unseen footage I have chilling on my hard drive. All of this news comes in the form of the Enzoi Discord, where Keijun, who is the lead producer of the game, I think that's his title, he's lead developer, lead producer, one of those two, he posts in a channel called Keijun's Concerns, which can we just for a moment, before we get into like talking about uh, his, what he's posted, can we just talk about how interesting it is to get an inside perspective of a lead developer on a triple A studio game talking about things that he's concerned about for the game and weighing this against consumer feedback, people who are going to buy the game. It is so fascinating to me and it's 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 kind of going down as like a research study. It's it's setting a precedent. Kajun is talking about things that he's unsure if consumers will like and he wants to get feedback. That's one of the biggest things I noticed back in November was that Crafton really was pushing hard for just play the game and make a video on things Things that you think we can improve upon or things you would like to see in a life sim. It's really fascinating for a AAA company to take this approach and so anyway I just wanted to say that um, this is like a precedent this has never been done before in life simulation genre and I think video games in general I don't think they've asked this closely consumers what they think about a mechanism or a gameplay feature in a game. So the first thing that Kajun posted in Kajun's concerns is titled unlimited floors and build mode. He said if you had no limits, how many floors would you like to have in your house? Would you sacrifice game performance if that's what it took to have as many floors as you can? One of my favorite things to do in Inzoi is building houses. Most Koreans live in apartment complexes, so having that freedom to build your dream home from scratch on a giant plot of land is always a fun process. However, when you have multiple floors in your home, you have to consider not only the floors themselves, but additional furniture that will likely be placed on those extra floors, which could possibly add up to a couple hundred pieces of furniture if you're building a lot of floors. That takes a huge toll on how the game performs. Keijun goes on to say that they have set the upper limit of floors you can have in a home to four, which sounds pretty reasonable to me. I come from a perspective of not being a builder though, so that's just my own take, but of course Keijun wants to hear consumer feedback, which is why he is asking this in Keijun's concerns. In response to Keijun, June's concern post. I've picked a couple of the comments that I feel like exemplify a large majority of the messages. Of course, I can't show all of them because there's like over 100 messages in this thread, but jury says unlimited floors with notification period. I need skyscraper filled cities. As you can see, this has a lot of emojis and thumbs up and all that kind of stuff agreeing with them. The second comment is from Kitty who says, I think unlimited personally is unnecessary, but I think the idea of allowing an upper limit above four floors with a disclaimer would be a nice feature to have. It makes me think of Disney Dreamlight Valley, where there is a limit to how many decorations you can put up around your valley, but you can unlock the ability to have a higher limit, about double if I recall correctly, of decorations for higher end devices, which also comes with a disclaimer that it could cause issues on on some machines. I think this would be a really nice feature to allow more freedom for those whose computers can handle it, but I think something like 8 to 12-ish floors would be more than enough as a higher limit. The last comment comes from you, who says, going for unlimited as an option that people would like to have opt for sounds okay to me. Now here's my idea on this. What could be done is specifying a floor limit per building type. So for example, a standalone house could have a limit 
for let's say four maybe five floors apartment complex could have a limit of 25 to 35 floors and then we could have skyscrapers which they've detailed in a separate post and then they say tldr version let's say sky skyscrapers could have a limit of 150 floors and so on i'm interested to hear what builders think about this i feel like i don't really have an investment in this particular concern so i don't care either way i mean four is definitely enough for me if i decide to build in the first place but builders definitely gonna be uh interesting for you guys to weigh in on this the next concern is titled how long should one day be for inzoi now just before we get into what kjun has said i do want to say that when i was playing inzoi i did feel like the days were extremely long compared to other life sim games like i think i played for four hours on a stream which of course i will link in a card in the top right if you just want to watch like four hour unedited inzoi footage gameplay yeah i think we played like only three-ish days on stream or four days which is an extremely sh long amount of time to be playing a game and only advance like four days so anyway let's get into kjun what he has said about this concern how many real world minutes would make a Zoe's one full day feel just right? In developing in Zoe, we set out to create just about every component to closely replicate what you would experience in real life, including the distance needed to get from point A to point B, as well as the physical sizes of different elements within the game. However, one thing that cannot be further from replicating real life is our concept of time. In a game where you are able to play as multiple individuals or multiple households, requiring you to play the game for 24 real hours to get through one day of game progress by any stretch of the imagination cannot make for a great experience thus begs the question how many minutes is just enough currently our development team believes it's 96 minutes and the following paragraphs will explain how we got to that number and then kjun goes on to explain that they quantified this by having the zoe wash and change clothes eat breakfast go to work and also they accounted for the environments so like doan which is the korean inspired city they uh, accounted for travel time and how it's a really large map and so anyway there's a meme that he also <laughs> put on here a minute 40 seconds to get to work late again and then he has the conversion a minute 40 seconds is one hour of gameplay one 43 minutes is 24 hours of gameplay here are a couple of the replies we have one again from you who says one way that i think you could approach this is to let the player choose it via a slider somewhere in gameplay settings there could be an option for example called game time speed where the players could select the speed from a selection of defined options for example 24 minutes 48 minutes 96 minutes 128 minutes and so on note the numbers and number of options are just examples and then players could decide the pacing of the day to what they feel like doing by dragging the slider to one of the options they want to go for one thing i will say about a slider is there is a little there, no there's not a little bit there's a fair amount of math that is involved when you quantify motive decay in terms of a zoe so like if you set the day to be really short obviously the zoe's motives in order to account for that would also have to be mathematically determined like okay so if you want to change the day by like 128 minutes well then you need 128 minutes of math to account for the zoe's motive decay to keep up with that i guess this is totally doable though if it is on a slider but it's gonna be a pain in the ass for the developers over at Enzoi, but hey, I guess that's why they get paid the big bucks to develop the game, right? <laughs> the next comment comes from one of my viewers. Hi, Maya. And Maya says, from watching the A Cotton Sock live stream, hey, shout out. I actually found the slower game clock to be distinct and a great choice to make the game feel unique, as if you had plenty of time to do many things throughout the day. The slower pace gave a sense of calmness while communicating to the player through non-narrative means that the city is vast and exciting with so many people to meet and things to do i'm gonna kind of interject here and i feel like this is totally a valid point but when the newness wears off and having to play the game at that really slow pace it's definitely gonna be a problem like when you've explored every inch of doan when you have i don't know 150 game hours 250 game hours in inzoi 
that that game clock issue is going to be very prevalent because you've are the newness has weared off you've already done and seen everything maya continues from a game development standpoint i may question the use of a slider like people are suggesting in settings to change the game clock it might make support and qa an absolute nightmare due to the core game clock possibly affecting core mechanics such as motive this is exactly what i was saying motive decay environmental changes lighting career progression etc that i didn't even i didn't even think of the lighting and like the environment changes like how the game dynamically changes like it rains and it snows and all that kind of i didn't even think about that so that's a good point maya think to how changing the core game speeds in the sims 3 through nros relative this is a good i'm sorry i'm interjecting so much on this comment um this is a good note here because i come from a place of like playing the retro sims games specifically sims 2 and sims 3 and yeah sims 3 has a mod called nros relativity where you can dynamically change the mode of decay as well as the in-game clock to make the day shorter or longer but it also does have a downside of making the sky flicker like it makes the sky like the stars like jiggle back and forth it's really it's really odd i don't know why that problem happens i'm not even a dev and i'm crying just thinking about the horrors of every single one of your players on a different game clock speed overall i do love the slower pace as we saw in previous play tests it was a good call i don't agree with this comment i think the gameplay was the the game time clock rather was really slow um but again this is why we're hearing everyone's opinions so opinions are a fun thing everyone has a different one the last comment is from bright eyes and they say hi kjun i agree with the idea of having the ability to edit the time frame with a slider having variable speeds a pop-up work notification maybe one to three hours in advance i forgot that this was a problem like my zoe would get notified that they had work in an hour and it wouldn't be enough time to commute to the work lot okay i remember I'm, it's like coming sorry this was back in november so it was a very long time ago Bright Eye says, that way you satisfy everyone. Some people may feel it's too long or too short. Thank you for allowing the community to be deeply involved with the development. So what do you guys think? I actually have kind of an investment in this question because as I played the game, I found that the game clock was very slow. Even after four hours of, you know, when the newness is still there, four hours into the live stream, I was like, the game clock is moving so slow. I guess it's hard to gauge that, like how you stand on the question though, until you play the game itself. Like you may not know, but you're watching videos and you're seeing this information, you know, written in text. You, you really have to get in there and get your hands on the game in order to see if four hours is long or, or is too long or too short. Uh, why did I say four hours? If the game clock is too short or too long in the game. Sorry, I misspoke. I was still thinking about my live stream that I did. All right, the next question, or the next concern, sorry, is titled cars to drive or not to drive. Kjun starts off by saying, how many of you actually enjoy driving? Today, we're going to talk about cars. More specifically, we want to talk about when a Zoe gets inside a vehicle, which of these two approaches is more suitable for a game like in Zoe. Car automatically drives itself to a designated location or player manually drives the car to reach their destination. So the number one the car automatically driving itself that is a very like sims approach a sim of the sims always has the cars so you can't manually drive them and then number two is like a grand theft auto approach where you are manually driving the car from point a to point b today's question initially arose from a more fundamental question of will it be enjoyable if you had to drive everywhere every single time my perspective naturally comes and the fact that I don't enjoy driving, not even in the slightest. This is a real life driving I'm talking about. I'm always almost resort to using public transportation, which some may know is super convenient in Korea. However, I'm also aware for reasons unknown, that there are those who enjoy the act of driving. Unfortunately, we were in a situation where we had to select only one of these two options. And when we looked back to why we decided to make cars in the first place, it was simply to reduce the long travel time for Zoys to get from point A to point B. For that reason, we had decided to focus on the auto drive option for operating cars in, in Zoy. So he's right out of the gate saying that we can't do both. Like it can't be a setting. It either has to be one or the other. Well, I would say that the main reason we also had was some supporting reasons. First, we didn't make the roads in Enzoi to be very wide, which makes it difficult for players to drive really fast with a high level of freedom like you could in something like gta if we were to make roads wider and maybe add some fun driving mechanics we would also run into another problem with optimization to make up for the fact that we remove the ability to manually drive your car we wanted to create some other features that i think you'll like this includes things like washing and repairing your car to listen to music while you're driving and rolling down your windows to interact with the other zoys 
outside. So what do you guys think about the direction that Enzoi is taking with the cars? The first community feedback comment is from Roz, who says, I think I really like the idea to drive manually, but this isn't GTA where driving is main aspect of the gameplay. So for life simulation games, it should be automatic driving, much convenient for players and also easier for developers. That's a good point that GTA centers a lot around driving. Like every single mission in GTA, you are driving from point A to point B. Whereas in life in general, and also in life simulation games, driving is just a secondary aspect, like the gameplay, the familial unit, job progression, all that is at the forefront of a life simulation game. Whereas like an open world shooter kind of game like Grand Theft Auto, the driving is a huge part of the game. Like there's so many driving missions in GTA 5 and also GTA Online. And so it's integrated into the gameplay in that regard. The next comment comes from the Fae who says, while I enjoy driving in games, I don't think driving manually should be added to Inzoi. As stated, the roads aren't designed for this. I feel like it's better to remove the option altogether than try to implement it without being able to fully commit to the experience. I think the added features sound nice. Watching and repairing your car feels like a nice bit of realism even without driving it. And listening to music and rolling down your windows to chat with people gives you a degree of control and something to entertain yourself with on longer trips. As just pointed out, the manual driving system would be tricky if you're juggling multiple Zoys. I hadn't thought of that. Nice catch. And since you're only able to make one system, it'd be better to make it automatic rather than the manual. The most degree of control I'd want over actual driving would be to stop the car, probably by canceling the action, if I saw something interesting on the side of the road or wanted to pick up a hitchhiker or something. First off, I really like how this commenter says that it's better to really designate your time into one or the other rather than trying to please both groups when they say um, it, it's remove the option altogether than try to implement it without being able to fully commit to the experience. I think that's a really good point just in general. Like if Inzoi does do both options, you have to realize that they have to designate time into like for example the floor thing like having an option where they could do a ton of floors in a house versus a limiter if they sync time into one or the other like one might be more buggy and janky than the other you have to realize if they just sync all their time into doing one option then it usually will turn out a lot better and it'll be much more implemented better much more well implemented better implement better implemented sorry i can't speak english obviously the third comment says i think driving to your destination would be a lot cooler because it could affect your job and maybe get marked if you're late usually if you're late three times in the u.s it's a write-up three write-ups means you're fired so keeping punctuality and adding manual driving for players would be cool and could keep everyone engaged with this manual feature i also think it would be a lot easier to get into accidents where they could lose their driving privilege for a certain amount of time or if someone gets hurt and they have to pay a fine or a medical bill for both players i'm gonna weigh in here from my perspective of playing the game i actually really liked the gameplay outcome of if you stand in traffic and get hit by a car your zoe will die like it, it just adds to the world building and as morbid as it is it is it is a fact of life like you stand in traffic you're gonna get hit by a car you know what i mean and also Inzoi is like the first life simulation game to have a mechanic like this like stand in traffic get hit by a car you die i think it'd also be interesting if there was varying levels of if you get hit by a car like maybe okay one option is you die another option is you get seriously injured another option is like you're barely bruised at all you know what i mean so having multiple avenues of gameplay outcomes could could really be interesting. And anyway, back to the comment, they say, with this manual feature, I also think it would be a lot easier to get into accidents where they could lose their driving privilege for a certain amount of time, or if someone gets hurt and they have to pay a fine or medical bill for both players. Another thing about manual driving is now we also have self-driving electric cars. I was also thinking of making the vehicles like where you can choose to drive yourself or let the car drive you on its own. With the Tesla models that also have this feature, maybe the self-driving cars could be considered luxury that players have to work up and get. 
It's just my idea, but I also think having self-driving cars could also be good for players who aren't good with keyboard steering. I use a wheel, not my keyboard. My last idea is also maybe having a teleport system for those on bikes or scooters who can't have vehicles for whatever reason, such as expensive vehicle or ex vehicles are expensive to buy, sorry. Or maybe having a teleport option for buses and trains as well, so players can also have the option to teleport around if they truly want to. I like the idea of integrating multiple types of transportation, buses, bikes, cars, all that kind of stuff, trains even, the commenter says. I think it'd be really good to have multiple avenues of this. I'm not too keen on the teleporting part, but it does make sense. The thing about the buses though is I don't think I'd want to be sitting on the bus having to watch my Zoe wait for their stop to come and have them travel all around Doan. I think that seems that might be kind of annoying to do honestly um but having multiple avenues of transportation would be cool it makes me think of in grand theft auto you can actually take the subway system under the ground in los santos which is really cool because it's like a feature that a lot of people probably don't know about a lot of people that haven't played Grand Theft Auto 5 much, you can actually take the subway around Los Santos, even though nobody ever does it. Everyone always drives a car, but the option is there if you wanted to do it. And I think that that philosophy could also be applied to this particular concern that Kjun has. All right, the last Kjun concern that we have as of today's date says, ever since I was young, I've always loved drawing and making things, which led me to study painting in college. I think that's why I connect so deeply with our players who desire to create amazing things with Enzoi. Currently, my team and I are working on various ways to make your creative process much more enjoyable and allow you to share your creations with other players in a dedicated platform. We're working to integrate professional tools like Blender and Photoshop to help create assets for Inzoi while also developing a more friendly alternative for players unaccustomed to these tools so that they can also enjoy the creative process in Inzoi. This is so cool that they're developing the game with these things in mind. You can upload and share character customizations and house builds through our dedicated platform called Canvas, enabling players worldwide to download and use your assets in their own game sessions. That means we won't have to, like in The Sims, you have to go to an outside platform like Tumblr or Patreon or Sims File Share, and the asset will be hosted on their server. Well, no, this is gonna be like in the game, like integrated in the game. If I see a couch that, uh, CC creator made, I can download it right in the game. Oh my God, this is so cool. This is something that has never been done before in life simulation games is actually being able to download a piece of custom content in the game. Today's topic addresses a sensitive issue of properly designating authorship for created assets to ensure that the author's credibility does not get lost in the process of their asset being distributed to other players. While we can all appreciate the fun aspects of creativity, it's also important to acknowledge the hard work and dedication that goes into it. As someone who understands this deeply, I wanted to provide the best possible protection for authors and their cred credibility over their created assets. However, finding the best solution for this has been very difficult. Nevertheless, we came up with a list of rules to provide authorization and protection for an asset's original author. See attached screenshot for a more detailed list, which goes on to say uploading an original asset to Canvas designates the current player as the author and that designation is bound to the asset. The only type of asset this, that does not receive designation is a customized room of a house. When uploading a full preset, the authors of each part face outfit will be displayed Displayed alongside the author of the full preset. Downloading an asset and editing it does not change the author. The only exception is when the asset is overwritten with one of our default presets and further edits were made, which changes the author to the current player. If there are additional rules you think we should add that better provide protection for authors, please let me know in the comments. And Kjun also shows off a video of what it's going to look like and how he is uploading right on the platform. He's pressing upload to canvas he can put in a name a picture i love that you can add filters and pose them in the game oh my god this is so cool it's like the the thought of this is just amazing and the customization you're able to do in this game is really setting a precedent for the life simulation genre kjun is adding a description for the character and it shows the author as you and you can also add contributors which is really cool
that is pretty much how canvas works and now he is browsing and showing us the interface of canvas oh and it shows all the assets under like all the assets that you they used you can also download like there's tons of obviously the devs have been uploading um zoe like crazy on here so that's really cool i can't wait to upload my zoe self it's gonna be <laughs> cool it's gonna be interesting i'm scared when i upload my zoe self like if someone downloads her it makes her do something crazy oh my gosh i'm scared about that oh there's also a studio this was something that was not in the game when i was playing it it looks like a, there's they added a studio so you can add like custom backgrounds and wow this is much more advanced than what i saw back in november like there's a lot more thought going into this the first comment from the community i by the way I cherry picked ones that are from modders themselves because i feel like they have the biggest say in this debate um, but kayuti says i think this is great however from the perspective of a modder and how frequently assets get ripped and abused the only exception is when the asset is overwritten with one of our default presets and further edits are made which changes the author to the current player they are citing one of the rules that kjun put on canvas and mentioned earlier kd says this is a huge problem this particular rule and will become abused in ways you didn't expect please allow for your reporting system to help us creators take down stolen content because with that very last system in place it's just bound to happen it would also be nice to allow for content to not solely be available just in game a designated mod folder for manual modding would be nice so we could still have paywalled content if we desired mods take a lot of work and often and it cost us modders a lot of money to do. The second comment is from Yoon, and Yoon says, as one of the largest CC creators for The Sims 4 on Patreon and The Sims Resource, I will tell you what it looks like from the author's perspective. I think that Canvas is a very interesting option in my game and certainly a great convenience for players, but as a creator at the moment, I say I will not use Canvas. Creating content for The Sims 4 is my job, and I don't hide the fact that I care about promoting my social media and increasing my reach because this is how I earn money. Even though I provide most of the content for free, I give my followers the opportunity to subscribe to my additional packages so if someone appreciates my work, they can support me in this way. Canvas is a very interesting tool. I don't think it interferes with external portals in any way, but I'm still skeptical about it because at the moment, it seems that it has quite a strong impact on the entire market of modders related to the Enzoi game. And to be honest, whether the author's name will be visible and how, unfortunately, does not really matter because 99% of downloaders do not pay attention to it. I propose that Canvas give creators the opportunity to upload their free content in the form of showing themselves and their offers. However, in the author's profile in Canvas, there was an option to refer downloaders to authors, social media, or other websites so that more interested players could download more of their creators favorite content and appreciate their work, then it would make sense for creators to share some of their works for free as part of advertising more content for interested people, and Canvas would always be free for players. This is why I handpicked the modders take on this because I think it's the most important person to be uh, speaking on this. I will also say there was a large debate in this chat forum in this thread where people were arguing against the paywalling of Inzoi mods and stuff and the non paying so like free mods and things like that this comment in specific i'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's kind of long it's by rainy aki and they say one thing i don't understand is why people would complain about mods and custom content being paywalled in game if enzoi's gameplay is enjoyable these mods and custom content are entirely optional if enzoi provides us convenient tools mod support and player authorization it justifies the platform taking a share of the revenue the added the added value of these tools and support systems gives creators more reason to share their earnings with Enzoi. I think it's really interesting the debate of like paywalling custom content and not paywalling custom content in Canvas and Enzoi. I don't know how that would work. I think that this, I, I do not anticipate this having this sort of fleshed out revenue share between modders and the developers, um, or I guess with Crafton. When the game launches, it seems highly unlikely. Like that would have to be something that would have to probably be further down the line. It's probably not going to be released when the early access of the game releases, if that makes sense. It just seems too complicated. And uh, I think that at first, Enzoi is going to, if I had to predict, I don't have any like inkling or any inside information or anything like that, but if this paywalling thing 
was to be implemented into the game. I think it'd be something that would be happening further down the line. I don't foresee this happening when the game launches. I think it's all going to be free assets and free creations on Canvas. One thing I will say is I think it was in comment number one that we looked at. I would like an external way. I know I was just talking about how I really like that this is like an integrated marketplace and how it's going to be in the game, but I would also like a exterior way, like if you can access these mods and creations and stuff in your mods folder, that would be really awesome as well. Just like an added way to be able to access them and edit them. Usually how this works is like any in-game way to to do these things is usually quite limited at first until they get player feedback and then they can implement it. So if we could right out of the gate access these files outside of the game, it would really allow for the quicker development of like really nice CC and mods and all that kind of thing, rather than having to use Canvas's features, which I assume are going to be pretty limited at first when the game launches, because that's usually how these things work. Anyway, guys, those are all four of Keijun's concerns. Should I continue to cover these? I feel like it gives a really interesting insight into the game and also a really interesting insight into the minds of the developers and, of course, the lead producer, Keijun. I have never seen a company or a development team be more interested in player feedback Again, I don't follow like a ton of game development. I usually, like I play I play a ton of games, don't get me wrong. Like I play Overwatch 2 a ton. I play Valorant, I play League of Legends, and I of course play all the Sims games. I also really like Bethesda games, Skyrim, Fallout, all that kind of stuff. And just from the time I have been in the gaming community, I have never seen a company more interested in hearing player feedback and player and, and getting players' voices heard in the development of this game. It's something that I think this is going to set a precedent, surely for the life simulation genre, but maybe it can also domino into game dev in general, is being super, players, consumers being super involved in getting their voices heard in game dev. And I think that's something super important because they, at the end of the day, are the ones keeping the lights on and the crafting headquarters. They are the ones buying the games and furthering the development of the game. Anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video and let me know if I should do more of Kijun's concerns and kind of seeing what the community is feeling about some of the features in the game. I hope to see all you guys in the next one and I'll just plug again. I did play the game back in November. I was one of the lucky few that was able to get my hands on it. I have a four hour live stream. I have a 30 minute kind of like a rough and dirty um, every feature in the game kind of recap. So check out those two videos. I will leave them in the description box below. See you guys in the next one. Peace out guys. Bye.